Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. A little bit about me. Uh, yeah. So I am a developer at Zomato, which is the uh, leading restaurant aggregator in India. It has delivery and dining in India and dining in Dubai as well. So uh, yeah, let's go forward with that. We have a few solar clusters. The one that I'm going to be starting with is our keyword solar cluster. So this talk is about our uh, performance engineering, our performance tuning, and our uh, you know sca scalability and the problems we faced at scale. So we have around 500,000 restaurants for delivery. We have 50k brands, uh, 40k dishes, uh, which is an extreme classification problem actually. We have 20k special flows, uh, sorry, 20 special flows, which are basically entry points to our other businesses right on our search, and we support 13 different languages. So this is what our search look like, uh, looks like. You search for BUR, you get Burger King, you also get dishes and restaurants in the same page. So this is just to get an idea of what our throughput looks like during uh, peak hours and non-peak hours for us since it's a restaurant delivery business. Peak hours are uh, lunch and dinner usually. And you can see during night times the traffic is basically asymptotic. So it's around uh, 3000 RPS at peak during dinner. So uh, at first we started out with the standard solar master slave architecture and I believe I can say that word because India was a British colony for a hundred years. So uh, we, have, uh, we have scheduled indexing and we also have priority indexing. So we have a priority indexing job running every single night to refresh the entire index of our solar. And we have uh, pr you know, priority indexing where a restaurant if they want to change their image or their keyword or whatever they want, they can, you know, send in a request and we can update it to them. And our SLA is two hours. So our slave polling to the masters is on a two hour poll cycle. So after two hours, the changes are going to reflect on the slaves. And all of the read requests are handled by the slaves only, not the master in our case. So one thing is that we decided to go for a 100% spot instance type. So uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, spot, there are two types of instances, on-demand instances and spot instances in AWS. Spot instances are part of the spot market. They can be reclaimed anytime, uh, anytime the, uh, there's more demand for it, rather. With the benefit of having very, very less cost as compared to having a dedicated server which keeps on running all the time. So uh, as a measure, we saved around 80% in our uh, EC2 instance costs in last to last year just because of running spot. So what we wanted was we wanted more slaves so that you, you know if one of slaves would you know go away then uh, I mean it's not an issue for us. That is why we also wanted fault tolerance. But now the problem was that if a lot of slaves are reclaimed at once, if I have 15 slaves running and 10 of them are reclaimed at once, the new slaves that spawn in are again going to download the index changes from master and it, it's going to choke the network bandwidth of the master. So we had to do something about that problem. So we went ahead with something like this, where we have an elastic file storage, which contains uh, incremental backups, you know, uh, I mean, we take backups three times a day. So whenever a new slave instance spawns, it first copies data from the EFS before asking anything to the master. And then uh, once it's downloaded the last backup data, it downloads the incremental index from the master. So if my last backup was at 3, uh, 3 p.m. and there was a spot termination at 3.05, then I would still have the index data till 3 p.m. without ever talking to the master. And then once I boot up, I will download incremental changes from the master. So uh, from downloading gigabytes of data, we went to downloading kilobytes or megabytes of data from master. There were some performance tuning that we had to do to even get this running. First was read-write separation. We wanted master solely for uh, handling updates. We wanted slaves for, uh, I mean, uh, doing all of the read operations. One thing was that uh, whenever an auto commit happens, document cache is flushed, right? So what we wanted was uh, a big document cache, but that would mean that when, whenever document cache is flushed, our latency would increase for a longer time until that cache fills up. So we went for a slower replication strategy. So our slaves uh, replicate uh, once every two hours because of that, and it's become a part of our SLA, so it's not an issue for us. Uh, we went ahead with cold, AWS already offers cold start from the get-go, but that wasn't enough for us, so we went for warm-up queries as well. 
and then uh, yeah because we go with spot we do graceful handling of spot notices yeah so one problem for us was uh, we work a lot with dynamic fields uh, and all of them were indexed which is kind of a latency concern if you're uh, doing facets on them so we went and uh, added doc values to that so that it could create a reverse index and we would have faster faceting performance then we did some JVM parameter tuning, which is basically memory stuff. And we also tried different kinds of JVMs, uh, Azul, AWS, Kareto, Dragonwell, RALVM. We had to strike a balance between good boot up time and cost efficiency. So we went with GraalVM for our use case. And then there was some uh, connection, HTTP server connection pool tuning and all. So uh, yeah, since any of our instances can be claimed at any moment in time, Boot up time for us was around 15 minutes for a new slave to come up because even downloading data from EFS or downloading data from a backup would take X amounts of time and then it would download, start to download incremental changes from master. So initially we had an index size of 50 GB and it would result in a 15 minute boot up time. And now the problem here is that because of our traffic pattern, nearer to our lunch and dinner peaks, we require a lot of instances quickly. So having a 15 minute boot up time would result in a, I mean, lesser servers handling more requests suddenly. So that is obviously not an ideal scenario. So we had to do something about that. Then what we identified was that even though we support, we do support 13 different languages, 85% of our population searches in the English language, then it's Hindi, then it's other languages. So we decided to, uh, I mean, it's a naive approach in the beginning, but just to solve, curb the problem a little bit, we decided to split it into two solar clusters. One would be for uh, delivery only English queries, and the other would be uh, dining plus other languages, because dining queries were very, very less as compared to delivery queries. So this drastically reduced the in index size. So on the left-hand side here, it is the index size of the old cluster with 13 languages. And on the right-hand side, the new cluster, which is, uh, I mean, English only delivery cluster, which is uh, handling most of the queries now, as you can see from the graph above, the dotted line is the English only uh, cluster, and uh, since and uh, the bottom line is the old cluster. So it's handling most of the queries, and it has a smaller index size, which means our scalability concern was at, at this moment solved. But there were still uh, some challenges with our infrastructure. So uh, yeah, so there was a miss in from our SRE team part. So what happened was that an EC2 instance was supposed to be scheduled for a maintenance, and our SRE team completely spaced out on that. And that EC2 instance was the current solar master. So in our scenario, our slaves were uh, spot instances, but our master was an on-demand instance. So when the, uh, when the scheduled uh, EC2 maintenance happened, the master rebooted, but it rebooted into read-only mode. Now the problem was that scalability stopped, updates stopped, uh, stopped, everything stopped. We had to manually launch a new master and copy the index. Then just to you know, just to make sure this uh, is easier to recover from, we added scheduled AMI snapshots so that you know whenever our master goes down, you know, it's just one click away. The new deployment is just one click away. But it solved a uh, a very small part of the problem, not the bigger picture. We still wanted more fault tolerance for our system. So uh, we went and we decided to go into solar cloud. So there was another solar instance which was already scheduled for a solar version upgrade because we wanted to leverage certain features that our current solar deployment did not have. We decided to experiment solar cloud with that cluster. So this is our feed page basically. Whenever you search for pasta, you enter the next page. You can see some filters over here uh, and you can see a list of restaurants uh, at the bottom. So we fetch 5,000 restaurants over here. We do boosts and ranks on them. We filter by dishes, and we also filter by location. So uh, yeah, no. Why do we need to fetch 5,000 restaurants here? Because ranking is very important for us. There are in India, the restaurant and delivery density is very very high. So there could be uh, one S2 cell where or one delivery subzone where there might be as large as 65,000 restaurants delivering over there. So how do we, how do we select the best 5,000 restaurants from that to show in the feed? So here we leverage the boosts functionality. And uh, our uh, document structure for this particular solar instance, solar cluster looks like this, where we have a document, we have some child dishes, and we have child uh, delivery location information documents, each have their own scores. 
So if you're on the home page where you haven't selected any dish, then uh, the local location information is used. And if you're on the delivery, if you're on the pizza page or the pasta page, then child dishes code is used. So one thing was uh, when moving to solar cloud that how do we create our shards, right? So for, for our problem, we decided to optimize index size. So, you know, uh, I mean, shard, we have, we have four shards. So, you know, scalability num so, uh, min and max should be the same for shard one and shard two. It was a thing. So we decided to optimize for both app opens as well as index size. And we saw that our country had different restaurant densities in different regions of India. So we decided to split India into four parts. But as you can see over here, th those boxes are not of the same size. Because restaurants over here are densely packed and restaurants over here are a bit more loosely packed. But index size is more or less the same across all of those four shards, which we found quite fascinating. So uh, then we went and deployed this particular installation where we went all NRT replicas so that e each and every replica uh, can have a chance to become a leader. We have four shards. And uh, yeah, this worked for a while, but then uh, there was a downtime, an hour of complete downtime because of this particular cluster. So what happened was that this is our Zookeeper ensemble and uh, this is our NRT leader. And there were, th there were let's say, X amount of NRT replicas in the system. Uh, right now, for the purpose of this illustration, we're going with three. So there was T1, T2, and T3, right? T3 was the newest NRT spawned into the system. And whenever a new uh, NRT replica or a pull replica comes, it takes a pull from the master. And uh, there are chances that it has a index version, which is vastly different from uh, running, uh, currently running NRT replicas. So if you can see over here, NRT T1 had version X, NRT T2 had version X plus 1, and T3 had version X plus Y. The version of NRT T3 was very, very ahead of version T of T1 and T2. Now, what, what went wrong was spot reclamation of our NRT, which was actually the leader. So this is a very normal scenario. You know, uh, leaders come and go. We are OK with that. And you know, if the re-election triggers, usually it takes a couple of seconds. It's fine. Uh, so new uh, re leader election got triggered. And uh, NRT, uh, NRT T1 got a chance to be a new leader. But it rejected it because it felt that there would be a better leader because its index version was very, very less than T3. And it went into recovery mode, which means that it stopped serving traffic. Then we came to T2. The same thing happened with T2. Its uh, index version was very, very less than T3, so it stopped serving traffic. And then finally, T3 got to be the leader because there was no other leader present in the system. But the downside was it got to handle the full read throughput of our entire application. And because of that, it went down. And people were not able to uh, search for restaurants, order food, and there was a very big business impact because of this. What we did to recover from this was we cut read throughput completely until a new NRT spawned, became healthy, became the leader, and other NRTs took a pull from that. And that was how we recovered. But something more needed to be done so that this thing could never happen again, because just those spot savings were just too good to pass up. So key insights were replica and recovery mode don't serve traffic. All NRT candidate leaders can potentially go to recovery mode, as we saw over here. And we saw that near real-time functionality is not strictly required for our use case. So we can, we can get away with some T-log and pull replica-based approach. So uh, one good thing was pull re replicas do not take part in leader election. So I, they don't go into recovery mode if uh, you know, something goes wrong and your leader goes down. So our uh, final solar cloud architecture looks like this, where we went ahead with a couple of T-log instances and with 33% uh, uh, on-demand and 67% uh, spot, and our pull replicas, which are all spot. So in case of a, uh, in case of a leader downtime, a new T-log can be selected instantly, instantly because it does have the transaction log. And the best case scenario for that is that pull replicas don't go into recovery mode. So if a leader goes down, the worst thing hap can, that can happen to your system is that your pull replicas don't scale anymore. You can't add a new pull replica, but your current pull replicas will st still serve read throughput. So there's not a chance of downtime in that case. If, you're already, if you already plan your provisioning, then uh, it's not an issue because, I mean, uh, 
there are very less cases where very very unexpected throughput comes and we are not ready to scale for that yet so uh, this is how uh, index is maintained in nrt t log and pull replicas so pull replica just takes a plain download from the leader t log replica takes uh, directly store does not index the updates directly it stores them in a transaction log file so whenever the leader goes down and another t log replica has a chance to become a leader it just replaces those transaction logs and becomes the leader in nrt replica there is periodic flush of those the same transaction log in its index so here you can see that uh, pull replica does not have any dependency i mean uh, on updates so this was the best uh, use for our use case that's it uh, do you have any questions